everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I figured it was time for another video in my Business of YouTube series where I talk about the things that I am learning as I am growing this YouTube channel. And today I want to talk about sponsorships because I had a new sponsor this week that a lot of you were very excited about and some of you were very concerned about because I brought on a sponsor, WD, uh, who uh, is making network attached storage devices, which happens to be a product line that I review quite a bit, both from WD and a number of other uh, manufacturers as well. And some folks were concerned that perhaps this might you know, cloud my objectivity and that they really weren't sure they could trust my judgment anymore uh, on that product category. I, I vehemently disagree with that assertion because that is not uh, how I do business. And I wanted to kind of just give you an idea as to uh, what sponsorships I have taken so far, what the standards are that uh, I kind of have to have these sponsors meet in order for me to put my name to something, uh, and then look at some of the reasons why sponsorships are important for small channels like mine. So first thing I wanted to do, I was just talk about the sponsors that have been on board so far this year. Uh, the first one is Axel. They sponsored our CES coverage. Now I uh, got on a plane with a friend of mine and we went uh, out to Las Vegas and worked our butts off for uh, the whole time we were there producing about 40 or 45 videos give or take about all the different consumer electronics items that we saw there. Uh, that trip wasn't not inexpensive. It was a pretty expensive trip with airfare and hotel and everything else that uh, goes into it. And uh, those sponsorship dollars really helped us break even on that because uh, as a small channel, and I am, you know, 46,000 subscribers, believe it or not, is pretty small in the grand scheme of things. Uh, that trip is not a profit maker for me. It is really a great opportunity to go out and network and meet uh, more of these brands so I can make more contacts and learn about different things that I should be reviewing. Uh, and because the content is very news oriented, has a very short shelf life as far as its usefulness to uh, viewers out there, uh, I didn't get a lot of viewership overall. It was a couple hundred thousand views, which is nothing to sneeze at, of course, but it wasn't uh, you know, really the kind of viewership that I get that uh, I usually get on the channel with items that have a lot longer shelf life. So for example, like that uh, HD home run review that I did, the first one uh, was, you know, I think we're almost like a year and a half, two years into that uh, video, and it's still one of my top videos. It has a lot more life to it than something uh, very short duration like a CES coverage video. So their uh, sponsorship helped tremendously with that. I have been helping out Silicon Dust a little bit with uh, their HD home run DVR product. They did their Kickstarter video. I'm going to be doing a few things for their website also where I'm giving some how-to videos and some instructional things for uh, enhancing some of their documentation on the website because they're really starting to push into the consumer market and they wanted somebody to help explain how these products work in that regard. And of course, we have the WD sponsorship that uh, we announced earlier in the week. And that one's going to consist primarily of covering features of the MyCloud product line. So really a lot of the things that I was already doing, uh, I'll be doing for them on a sponsored basis uh, that'll appear here on the channel. They might try to use the video in other places also, but I felt it was a really good fit for uh, what I'm doing. And in every one of these cases, all of these sponsors, I am a customer of these companies. I was a customer long before I knew them. I was a customer long before I had a YouTube channel. And I really uh, can get behind these companies. So I've gotten to know who these people are and I can really feel very comfortable uh, putting my name behind those products. And uh, it's going to be a reality of the channel, of most channels moving forward. In fact, uh, most folks who are doing what I'm doing independently take sponsorships from companies that they might be reviewing products for. And yes, it is a little bit of a different thing now because there isn't that separation between the editorial content myself uh, and the sales side. I'm doing everything on this channel, including switching the cameras right now. And that's something I want to change. I want to be able to bring on people, maybe to run the cameras, maybe to do some things for me. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to get that help for free. I mean, I'm sure I could, but I don't feel right about it. I think if people are going to be coming on and helping me run my business, that they should be compensated for that. And in order to do that, the channel has to grow. And that is really uh, what a lot of YouTubers run into because uh, even those who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, uh, all of them have day jobs. There's a very small, small subset uh, that have been able to really make a go at it uh, and going full time to do it. But uh, in many cases, they're you know, either single and don't yet have a family. And uh, for those that do have families, you know, maybe there's, there's a two income household or there's other factors that uh, come into play. But uh, this is not a way to become a millionaire very quickly. I mean, there's people that are, but uh, the reality is that uh, for most of us doing this, it is a labor of love. And uh, although you do get compensated, it's certainly not enough for uh, someone of my age getting into the things that I need to plan for for the future uh, to be able to rely on as a full-time occupation. So that is why sponsorship is important. And that's also why, um, unfortunately, it's required of the creators now to kind of be the business person as well as the content generator. And in almost every case now in modern content, 
Uh, those who are successful independently are successful because they've been able to successfully balance uh, the generation of quality content as well as running the business of what they do. And that is what I'm doing here, trying my best. And I'm going to be putting up a very high mark for when I accept the sponsorship. And I'll tell you in a minute again that I have turned them away. So I just want to give you an idea of what our revenue pie chart is looking like here. I don't believe YouTube allows me to disclose what they're paying me, uh, but I will put it in this context for you. If I was still single and maybe living with four or five people in a shared apartment or house, uh, I could probably break, you know, get by with ramen noodles and some other stuff. I'm not saying this to say that I don't appreciate all that YouTube is doing selling advertising on my behalf, but there's just a certain economic reality to uh, what a channel of my size brings in in revenue. And when I did the math and projected out exactly um, what would happen if I had maybe four times the content, if I had, you know, I do about 20 to 30 hours a week on the channel now, that's all inclusive of, you know, replying to your comments and shooting and editing and everything else. Uh, if I expanded that to maybe doing a 60 hour week um, and how many videos I could produce under that uh, scope, I still wouldn't be there. I even, not even remotely close to uh, what I need for, you know, again, raising my family and planning for uh, the future. So I have to keep my day job and it's a job that I uh, am, it's part of my family. It's a family business and I'm not going to leave that anytime soon. So um, that's the scope of it. So 68% is from YouTube, a smaller portion, 31% from Amazon. And I also wanted to put up here what's coming in from viewers, not to make people feel guilty for not contributing to the Patreon, but just to kind of put it in context that, you know, reader revenue or viewer revenue uh, is appreciated and so important in this day and age, but it's one piece of the pie. And the reality for me is when you look at my overall viewership, I've had 4.3 million views uh, over just this year alone, uh, but only 7% of that came from the subscription base. So it's not reasonable to expect that uh, people will be able to contribute enough revenue uh, to be able to make it so I don't have to take sponsors on the channel. It's just not feasible. And I don't even want that because uh, the last thing that I want to do personally on this channel is to create kind of a two-tier system where those who are paying can get access to me and those who are not paying don't. And I try my best to respond to every comment as best I can. As the channel grows, it gets very, very hard to do that. Uh, but the last thing I want to do, especially when I cover a lot of affordable items, uh, especially when I have half my traffic coming from outside the United States, especially where you know, buying even a $200 computer is a much greater a portion of someone's income than it might be for someone here in the United States. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm not you know, becoming this, this pay-only club uh, for certain, you know, a certain group of people that can afford to do that, is don't feel right about it. Uh, the people that are contributing are doing it voluntarily. I greatly appreciate what they're doing because it does help offset uh, my overhead, which primarily consists of uh, buying the items that I review on the channel because not every uh, manufacturer wants to send me their inexpensive items to loan me because that's not a product they want to focus on in their marketing plans. They don't, they don't make a lot of money on the inexpensive products. So I buy a lot of this stuff, review it, resell it, and lose money in the transaction. So that that small amount of viewer revenue is really helpful and appreciated. But again, I don't want to rely on it. I just don't feel that it's a, it's, for me, it's the right thing to do. For other YouTubers who, you know, have, you know, one of my favorite uh, channels that I watch is this guy called Metal Jesus. He's a uh, retro game reviewer. And uh, there's some value that he's been able to come up with for viewer, for reader revenue, because a lot of times he'll cover a series of games that are uh, retro in nature. And all of a sudden they show up on eBay for a lot more money. So he wanted to provide a service maybe where uh, his viewers can get access to what he's going to review early on so they can uh, buy those games before they get more expensive on eBay or something. And that works for him. But for me, this doesn't work. And if I, and I was also thinking about, well, maybe I could have a video, um, you know, put up early so people could see it before it posts. But uh, the nature of my channel, given how much comes in from search versus uh, people that are subscribed to the channel, uh, most of my revenue comes from the searchers. And I don't want to have a video held while uh, people might out, be out there looking for that product. So that is why I haven't done more with the Patreon or with the fan funding. Uh, because I really want to be careful about uh, not, you know, again, creating two classes of viewers uh, or in the audience. And also because I don't want to get into a situation where I'm holding back videos that could actually be helping grow the channel uh, because uh, I have, again, two classes of my audience established. So I'm going to try to be as fair to everybody, whether they're a paid uh, person or not. And uh, if that means I'm going to lose reader revenue or viewer revenue as a result of that, so be it. But I just don't want to go down that road of having a paywall or having, you know, again, treating people differently based on what they can afford to pay. So that just gives you an idea of, of how the sponsorship model is. Now, I have refused on numerous occasions uh, offers from this company called FameBit. And uh, what they do is they have a Thing where they go after YouTubers to review products um, that they will pay you 
uh, to do the review. And I will not do paid reviews. So even though WD is sponsoring what I'm doing, I'm not reviewing their products for money. I am actually you know, doing things that are talking about their products specifically, but not reviewing them. And in the case of FameBit, uh, somebody reached out to me from the company uh, and asked me to do a review of this doorbell that has a video stream that goes to your phone. And it's you know something I would normally uh, look at if, there, if a manufacturer reached out to me to say, hey, would you be interested in reviewing this? I would say, sure, I'd be interested in reviewing it. But uh, this one came with a dollar figure attached for me in addition to uh, what they were offering. And they send me this stuff all the time, by the way. This is not unique to this one instance. And I wrote back to her and I said, look, I'm redacting her name just so I just so that we don't get her in trouble. But I said, look, I don't review things for money. I said, if your you know, your partner, whoever it is, wants me to review the product, send it to the show. But I'm not going to guarantee. I don't guarantee positive reviews for money. It's just not what I do. Uh, and her response was this. Well, thank you for your reply. Unfortunately, this campaign, uh, the client would need a video with a positive review. So in other words, there's a bunch of videos out for this doorbell and you can go find them. I looked up a whole bunch of them uh, where people are reviewing it and not speaking, you know, not really giving people the full picture because if they say one thing negative, they don't get the money. Uh, the way this fame bit thing works is they've got, you know, they kind of bid on each offer that comes through and uh, the companies can kind of pick out which one they want to look at it. So there's almost a competitive thing to be the most positive on this stuff. And go look for this, uh, this thing. It's called the Ring, um, the, the Ring Doorbell. Uh, and you'll see, you know, I'm not going to disparage these guys for doing what they're doing. If they want to run a, you know, essentially a, you know, a, a infomercial channel, that's great. But that's not a review. And that's not something I'm going to do. I've refused more than just this offer from FameBit uh, and many others too. But this is what's happening out there is that there's a lot of this pay for play stuff where uh, it's getting sketchy, especially here in the United States where there's laws against this sort of thing. But this is what's out there and this is not what I'm going to do. So when someone sponsors me, they're not buying me off. This is not my primary revenue uh, for my life. Uh, this channel sustains itself. And that's really, I've been actually, all the revenue last year with a very small amount uh, left over, I poured into uh, all the equipment that I'm using now. So I've been really growing the channel on its own revenue and not uh, using this to live on. And as a result, I'm not hungry enough that I have to go take these kinds of offers. So I want you to know uh, that this is what I'm about, that I'm not going to be going into uh, you know, with WD and just taking money from them to give them glowing positive reviews every time. Uh, they're a product that I use and I like. And I'm going to be uh, you know, talking about the features of those products. But if there's something I don't like when I do a review, I don't get paid for reviews. Remember, I'm never going to take money to do a paid review. Uh, if there's something about one of their products that has a shortfall, I will point it out uh, as I've done in the past. Now, I have this Ars Technica article up because this is an example of something that's happening on a larger scale with uh, some of the larger folks in the uh, YouTube space. And this was something that happened last year. Um, as you know, there's a multi-channel network called Machinima, which a lot of very, very popular YouTubers are a part of. And what they uh, do is they, the way they add their value to their partners is they say to people, hey, if um, uh, Microsoft has this thing, they want you to uh, talk about the Xbox One uh, in your video and we'll pay you X amount of dollars per thousand views for that uh, mention and that placement. And here's the problem with what happened there though, uh, is that part of the deal, and this is a direct quote from what these people were sent, the YouTubers were sent, uh, you may not say anything negative or disparaging about Machinima, Xbox One, or any of its games. Additionally, you must keep the details of the promotional agreement confidential in order to qualify for payment. In other words, they can't say in this agreement uh, that they were being paid to place the Xbox One in their video. And this is freaking illegal here in the United States. The Federal Trade Commission is very clear that if someone is compensating you for putting content out there, especially if you present yourself as a you know independent creator of something, uh, you're breaking the law. The problem is in the case of that fame bit thing, there's so much stuff out there happening. There's no way anyone can ever enforce any of it, especially when these channels are very small and only getting a few thousand views apiece. But it's happening almost at the institutional level here uh, with Machinima and others. So here's the deal. When I get a sponsorship, I'm going to tell you it's a sponsored post. I'm going to tell you who's the one sponsoring that piece of content. And if I, you know, even when things are sent to the show to review, at the outset, I'm always going to say, you know, so and so company sent this item to the show to review, which means that uh, that item was uh, given to the show and is not going to be given back. And that is a very clear distinction. I want you to understand when that happens. When that stuff comes here and I say it's been, you know, they sent it to the show to review, it means that uh, that item was sent here to review by the company and they don't want it back. If, in most cases, this is actually what I prefer, I like it when they loan the item to me. So all the stuff we get from Lenovo is all loaned in. Uh, and the reason why uh, that is good because I don't have to keep it in the house. First of all, my wife wants it all out of the house, but uh, it's also a lot easier because 
uh, you know, sometimes I, I actually can't sell the stuff that comes in for, for free most of the time. Uh, so I have to find a place for it. And I know a lot of you have been asking, oh, can you give it to me? Can you give it to me? What I have been doing with a lot of it is donating it to uh, my local schools or other places that uh, need that equipment for something that's really important that helps people. So that's what I've been doing. So, um, so if you're wondering why I don't give stuff away on the channel, there's a whole bunch of legal reasons for it. But uh, typically it's because of the fact that um, it's just, I can't, I just not, I'm not allowed to uh, give some of the stuff away that comes in. And quite honestly, I don't want free stuff. I, I have three you know, things that I use most of the time. I've got my two laptops, my old Mac here. It's three years old. It's still working just great for me. I got the new MacBook that I bought. I got my watch, my phone, and my iPad. That's the stuff that I use all the time. Uh, the rest of the stuff that comes in here, believe me, the free stuff is not what I'm in this for. I'm in this for uh, building a YouTube channel that I'm really having a great time doing. And I just wanted to do this video, A, to talk about sponsorships, things you should be thinking about, things to avoid like this illegal activity where you're not you know, revealing that you're taking sponsorships, but also for you all to know that, sure, we're going to be taking sponsors on uh, moving forward, but I'm not going to be taking sponsors on that I can't get behind as a customer of that product or at least someone who's uh, developed a good enough feeling about the product and the company behind it to be able to recommend it to you. And that's, that's my pledge and that's how it's going to be. Some people may not believe me and that's fine, but um, I think if you look at the breadth of the content I've done over the last two and a half, three years on this channel, uh, that's the standard I've set. Uh, that's what I'm going to continue to set moving forward. And my objective here uh, is to build something that's going to be great. And I'm not going to uh, do that by uh, compromising my own principles or uh, the principles that I've established for this brand, which is uh, growing at a really cool pace that I'm really excited about. So let's have a conversation. Leave some uh, notes in the comments below. Let's talk because I really want to you know, get th you know, talk this through more because I, I was, you know, the criticism that I had over the sponsorship was really appreciated because the people that did uh, mention those things really were thoughtful in how they presented their, their position on this. And I really want to talk through this a little bit more and see if I can get some folks to a comfort level with it moving forward. So that will do it for this Business of YouTube video. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.